There we go. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the In Michigan podcast. I am your host, Ryan Redute, aka That Michigan Guy on TikTok and Instagram. And in today's episode, we are going to be talking about the Michigan and Ohio war. Yes, there was one. I'll explain what it was about later on. But before we dive into that, just kind of want to talk about what's going on in Michigan now. It's going into fall. Fall is here as when I'm recording this. The leaves are already starting to change depending on the species, I guess. I don't know. But driving around, the colors are starting here. I'm looking out in my backyard right now and it is already starting to look beautiful a little bit. I can see little colors popping up. I can see things changing. Things are red in front of me. They're green. So I'm very excited. Feel free to enjoy it yourself by planning a trip to maybe going from the east to the west coast or vice versa so that you can drive along that path. I know there's all these maps around um, that you can Google to look at in real time, you know, what dates you can expect leaves to be changing the most throughout Michigan because we have a lot of different uh, locations, i.e. like the UP is going to start changing leaves quicker than the Lower Peninsula. So you can Google Maps to find out when so that when you're planning a drive, let's say you go up to Traverse City, you know that the whole drive is just going to be beautiful um, and you can really plan out your fall that way. Also apple picking. I just went apple picking for the first time myself and it was actually pretty fun and the apples were definitely fresh and tasty, specifically Michigan grown apples. I found out are, you know, because of the environment we have, Michigan's uh, apples tend to be very delicious. So make sure you check out your apple orchards, get your donuts, everything. Um, and yeah, just be enjoying the fall energy. I think that's our goal right now as Michiganders. Now that summer's over, we can start layering a little bit, even though it's kind of hot right now, it's gonna be cold in about two days. Uh, that's just the Michigan way. Just wait five minutes when the weather changes. But uh, I hope you all are enjoying your fall. Now, getting into the next segment of Michigander Say What before our main segment, um, I'm pulling this one from a recent video about the Michigan accent that I did. The video has like 300,000 views in only a couple of days. So I'm very excited about that because it's getting it out to all the Michiganders and honestly, some people from other states are chiming in too in the comments. Honestly, the comment section on TikTok is really where the party's at. And I'm noticing on Instagram too, or even YouTube sometimes. YouTube not as aggressive because that channel's not as big for me right now, but even there was one comment on YouTube today, um, which go and subscribe if you haven't yet to kind of just be able to catch my content or content like this podcast visual upload. Um, you can check it out there on YouTube. But this one comment today particularly was just very funny. So the comment section on all of these social platforms really uh, can become their own social media platform in themselves, their own community. So be sure you're checking those out. Feel free to comment and at me if you would like to maybe talking about this episode in relation to something or just shoot me a message. I'm open to chat a little bit. Uh, and But this specific comment comes from TikTok on that video about the Michigan accent about get versus get and how in Michigan, I know I, <laughs> and this was really hard for me to make this video, the word get it's like, you have to say it like get. And even if you go to dictionary.com on Google and say like, you know, pronounce this, they say get. But in Michigan, at least at least specifically for me too, I say get a lot, like almost like G-I-T. So people are, go people are losing it over it, let's just say. <laughs> but um, I was really excited about that when I'm getting some good traction. Uh, so A-N-M-1157 commented on this video and said, I was out of the country once and was told there's no way I'm from the U.S. because my accent is so strong. Born and raised in Michigan. <laughs> and I honestly resonate with this a lot because there was one time I was in Denver and this kind of helped spark my whole Michigan accent journey. But I was in Denver and someone came up to me and said, are you British? And I said, what? And they were like, oh, your accent. And I was like, what? Hold on. British? Like that, that just boggled me. So it can be kind of interesting though what you find out and just like, I mean, even just someone I met recently, I, I, the way they were talking, I was like, oh my gosh, your accent is so strong. Like, are you from Michigan? Are you from maybe like the UP or from Wisconsin? And they were like, nope, born and raised here. So I feel like we do get a lot of those Wisconsin, even like New York influence. And I talk about that in a couple of videos of how the, how New York people who were in New York came to the Michigan area. And that's what inspired the Michigan accent a little bit too. Um, just a lot of things. Canada, we get a lot of influence from 
the states around us with our accents. So it's really interesting stuff though. Uh, so thank you for commenting ANM1157. <laughs> I always like, I always like reciting the names. Uh, but going into our main segment today, I want to talk about the Michigan and Ohio War. It was from 1835 to 36, so it's a very short war. No one died. There wasn't a lot of destruction because we're Michiganders. We don't do that. We're not that vibe. Like, we are a friendly energy. <laughs> I'm sure even in the 1800s, maybe. Um, but it was really over this area of land called the Toledo Strip, which you can imagine is where Toledo is. And Toledo is, I mean, I even have friends who I see weekly who are from Toledo. So it's that close to Metro Detroit. Um, but Ohio was like, it's ours. Michigan said, no, no, no it's ours. Um, and actually Congress had to get involved because they could not come to an agreement. Meanwhile, and this is an important factor in the story, the UP was not part of Michigan yet. The UP was just this land that was not taken up yet. Um, and no one was doing anything with it. Everyone thought that it was useless, that it was just kind of like this nothing land. So the war's happening. They're trying to make decisions. Congress gets involved in this Ohio-Michigan war, um, which I believe the official name of the war is called the Toledo War. Yes. So it's not really the Michigan-Ohio War. It's the Toledo War. But in the end of all of this decision-making, Congress deemed that Ohio would get Toledo and Michigan would get three-fourths of the UP which was thought, this, honestly, this whole, this podcast is turning into more, how did the Michigan get the Upper Peninsula? Because as you see, and I've actually talked to people from Wisconsin about this, a lot of it's over Wisconsin. <laughs> like, you're like, wait, how did Michigan end up getting this? So it was through this. Um, and three fourths of the UP went to Michigan in this agreement. Meanwhile, Toledo, or meanwhile, Ohio, got this 50 mile long strip of land that included Toledo. So Ohio is sitting there being like, oh my gosh, we did it. We knew we won. Um, this is on, I feel like this really honestly started the Ohio-Michigan kind of um, battle, the Royale, the Battle Royale, <laughs> the competition. Um, so Ohio is sitting here like, oh my gosh, I got this 50 mile strip. We got Toledo. We won. But plot twist they go and explore the Upper Peninsula and realize it is so rich in lumber and I believe copper. Um, so it has all of these natural resources. And Michigan's like, wait, we got a great deal. They, they lost Toledo, but they got all of these natural resources. So in my opinion, I feel like in the end, Michigan actually won. So I would say Michigan won the Toledo War of 1835 um, and we got the UP because of it. So in the long run, that's what happened with the war. And that's exactly what um, how he started to get the pretty much whole part of the UP that we own today, which I don't know about you, but I talked, I, don't, I think I, yes, I did talk about this in a previous podcast. I believe, I'll double check that. Yes, we'll just say I did. Because I went to the UP recently, I think I did one on Tuquamanon Falls, and if I haven't, I'm going to. Um, but if you explore the UP and you see how beautiful it is, you're going to be like, Ohio made a big mistake. <laughs> and then Wisconsin, to build on this, wasn't a state yet. It wasn't an official part of this, um, the state. It wasn't an official state yet. So Wisconsin was like nothing, like didn't have any say in this. And that's why Michigan got the UP, even the though so much of it is over Wisconsin. So that's also a really fun fact for you too. But overall, that's the war. I hope you enjoyed this little tidbit, this little episode that I thought was actually exciting. This is something that I actually tell people and they're always like, what? Like, how did that happen? And it's just interesting history to learn about Michigan. Um, if you like this episode, feel free to drop me a five-star review and listen to some other episodes too and uh, have fun. I, I know I listen to podcasts while I'm driving and I'm about to do a long drive. So maybe bulk them up for a road trip, your fall road trip, so you can listen to them on the way. Um, I especially like listening to the podcast when I'm alone in the car because I like just like hearing people talk. Um, but I hope that you have an amazing day. Uh, follow me on TikTok, Instagram, 
and YouTube for more Michigan content. I do about three or four videos a week right now on Midwest. Everyone's loving the Michigan mom content. Um, so you can check out those videos over there as well, which I'm very happy about because it's just fun to play a character. And other than that, I hope you all have an amazing day and I will see you all Mish again. Ha <laughs> ha.